What do you want with Jane Diamond? She inquires sharply. There's no followers allowed here. I'm not a follower, answers Alexis, but I want to see Jane Diamond alone for five minutes on business. The countenances of Cook and Footman plainly express an apprehension that this is the beginning of a deep laid scheme against the family plate. I'll tell you what, young man, says the cook with asperity. My missus is out of town, and we don't want no airy sneaks loafing about while she's away. And it ain't no good for them to loaf, adds the sandy-haired young man, who has not shaved for the last day or two, and whose chin is adorned with a tawny stubble like a newly cut wheat field. The plate has all been sent to the bank. Alexis fairly bursts out laughing. Is there so much difference between a chimney pot hat and a wide awake? between Poole and a colonial tailor, he says to himself. And then he adds aloud, if one of you simpletons will take the trouble to call Jane Diamond, she will be able to tell you that I'm a gentleman and that I have not come after the teaspoons or the umbrellas. I'll wait in the street for her. You can tell her that a gentleman from Australia wants a few words with her. Cook and footman whispered doubtfully for half a minute and then shut the door upon Mr. Secretan leaving him to infer their acquiescence with his request. He paces the pavement for five minutes or so, and then the good-natured Jane Diamond comes down the steps while Cook and Footman stand in the doorway to watch the proceedings. They see Jane gesticulate as an extreme surprise at sight of Alexis, and then the two walk a little further off, quite out of earshot, to the aggravation of Jane's fellow servants, whose curiosity is by this time raised to the highest pitch. I shouldn't wonder if he was some aristocratic half-brother of hers, says Cook, who is a devoted student of Reynolds' Mysteries of London. Life is full of family secrets and such like. Lord, sir, says Jane Diamond when she has recovered the shock of surprise. I thought you was dead and gone. Did you, Jane? Why? Because I fancied if you was in the land of the living, you wouldn't have turned a deaf ear to that advertisement. What advertisement? The advertisement is Miss Fawnthorpe, I beg pardon, Mrs. Never mind the name, girl. Tell me all about the advertisement. Jane explains herself in a roundabout way, but in due course, Alexis knows all that Jane knows, except his wife's present abode. That, the girl refuses to tell even to him. She told me to keep it a secret, and I'm not going to tell no one without her permission, says Jane resolutely. This resolve the husband combats, but in vain. I'll ask her leave to tell you, and when I've got her leave, I'll tell you, answers Jane. Wild horses wouldn't move me from that. Telegraph to her then directly, cries Alexis, taking out a handful of silver. Come with me to the nearest telegraph office, and I'll write the message for you. You can put in the address yourself. No, I won't send her no telegraphs, lest I should get her into trouble with her friends. I'll write to her. Inexorable girl. Is she in the country? Yes. 